Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've just bought myself another mini PC for another rig of mine, and this is gonna be running one of my rigs in my new observatory. I've got a mini PC um, on one of my mobile rigs. I've got a mini tower which runs my uh, EQ8 and CT10 rig, but I've got another rig that's gonna be in the observatory and that needs something to run it. So I'm going for another melee. Uh, I had the Mealy Quieter 2, which I've had excellent results with. This is an upgraded model, the Quieter 3Q. So I'm going to show you, out of the box, what you get, how to, uh, we're going to get it all turned on, and we're going to get it set up for astrophotography, and I'm going to go through all the steps. So hopefully, if you're thinking of doing something similar, this will be of help to you. If you watch my channel, you'll know that I uh, have already used one of these PCs before, uh, the previous model, the Mealy Quieter 2. This is the Mealy Quieter 3. So it has an upgraded processor, a little bit faster. These are really good for astrophotography. Um, what is great about them is they're fanless, so they haven't got air vents all over them. So that cuts down on the amount of moisture, dew, etc that can actually penetrate into the box. It uses the case as a heat sink to cool it down. And that as well prevents dew from forming on the case. Now some people have been concerned that they overheat. Now it may depend on your uh, where you are in the world and what your uh, climate is like. But in the UK, we never really get that hot. So these don't really run too hot and become a problem. But what we do get a lot of is dew, and these being warm uh, while they're working stops that dew from forming, and so you don't really have any problems with these at all outside. Now there are sprays that you can get from other boards that um, cover them and waterproof them. You can get them on Amazon, etc. I've never done that. Um, I'm considering it, um, but as I say, I've never had a problem with these or any problems with moisture. So um, I'll, I'll see if I'm going to go down that route. So anyway, in the box, I got the mini PC, which is lovely small form factor. You get uh, a few instructions. You get a power supply. I'll be powering this from a Pegasus power box, um, but you get a power supply, and what you need, if you're just using any other form of power supply, is it must end in a USB-C connection, which is one of those. Um, I've got some adapters that allow the power box advanced uh, connections to go into that. Um, you get a little cooling pad, and that's if you're going to be adding to this um, an M.2 uh, card for extending the memory. Not necessarily needed, it depends how much memory you want in there. You get some screws and a mounting plate, and that can help you mount it anywhere. I've not actually used these, I normally just use um, on, on the bottom Velcro pad and uh, stick it to my rig or uh, Lost Mandy plate wherever it is I'm gonna be using it from. So that's it really, what you get. So to set the thing up the easiest way, I find, and I'm on my son's PC here, um, and what you need to do, you need a screen, and you've got your HDMI outputs here. Um, you need your power to power it up. If you can connect to it through an ethernet cable, that's great, it's gonna help with all your downloads and speed things up. And you've got some USB ports on the back and a fourth one here on the side. So we can connect things like uh, a mouse and a keyboard. And that's going to allow us then to access this like a normal PC and set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it all in and we're going to turn it on and we're going to have a look at what you get when you very first turn one of these on. And we'll do all the things that we need to do like Windows updates or whatever's required and then we're going to start downloading the software needed to set this up for astrophotography. To get your Mealy PC working, 
we're going to need a few leads. Uh, you can connect through Wi-Fi, but Ethernet is the preferred one because that will give you the fastest connection. So there's your internet. We need an HDMI out to a screen so that we can see what we're doing. Uh, on the ports at the bottom here, I'm going to plug in a keyboard and a mouse so that we can control the uh, PC. I'm going to plug those in. So we've got our way of controlling it, we've got our screen, we've got our link, uh, internet. Last thing is the power which we've got plugged in. When we plug this in, the melee will then receive power and the power switch on the front, I'm just going to spin this round, will light up red as you can see there. And when we press that, it will go blue and then it should turn on and we should hopefully see something pop up on that screen. And it says Intel, so that's good, it's booting up. And we're going to go straight into the Melee and this is going to, this is straight from the box, brand new, never been turned on before. So we're going to see what we will see when we turn one of these on. Okay, and then we turn the PC on and here we are on the home screen. It's uh, running Windows 11, so it's nice and up to date. Um, it's saying certain things aren't signed on. I don't use OneDrive, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, so you can obviously set yours up uh, to how you would like things, whether you want OneDrive or widgets or anything like that. We don't want OneDrive, I don't use it. So, this is your main PC, and what we need to do is start to download software so that we've got it ready for astrophotography. One of the first things I do is sit down with a pad and a pen and just write a quick list of all the software things I'm gonna need for astrophotography. And uh, that gives me a good prompt to keep up to date with everything. So what I'm going to do, first of all, before I do anything, is I'm going to check that um, everything on the PC is up to date. We check for updates. So with all the updates done, I can now jump online and we can start to look for the programs that we need to... Um, download to get this ready for astrophotography. So we'll start with the ASCOM, if you put in ASCOM platform or ASCOM standards for astronomy, you'll come to this site here and on the right hand side there you'll see the platform and that's what you need. That platform there will hold on to all of your drivers and allow your computer to communicate with the ASCOM platform. So once that's downloaded, just open it up and um, it will come up with um, a load up screen that will load in and you just need to put that on your PC. And as I say, we'll just run through a few little bits, but uh, once that's been done, we can then go to the next thing and I'm gonna be putting in nighttime imaging and astronomy, which is the Nina is short for, and you'll see it comes up here. And you've got a few different types of uh, versions. So if you go to the Downloads uh, tab, you can see you've got your Release, and then you've also got your thing called Nightly Builds. Now, I used to use the Nightly Builds, but there's a lot of updates on them, and it started to cause me issues with my rolling roof. So I stopped using the Nightly, um, and I just used the release version. Um, originally, the rolling roof uh, operation wasn't in the release version, and so that's why I was using the nightly. But it's now available in the release version, so I just stick with that, um, which is a, the, the most stable version you've got of Nina. So we just download the zip on that. 
And one of the things I found with Nina is uh, you often get an update um, that's within the actual program itself and it says, would you like to update? And now what I never do is update it within itself. I always go back to the website and download the latest version. And the reason why I do this is because then if there are any problems with the new version, it's easier to roll back to the previous version that you know works fine. Um, if you update it within the program, you've kind of lost the previous version and it's, uh, I think you can still roll back, but it's a bit more complicated. So if you just keep a, uh, a, a copy of the last working version uh, in your downloads, then you can always roll back to that. You can uninstall it and reinstall to the new one. So Nina's uh, not a massive program, which is good. And uh, it natively supports a lot of uh, drivers, um, a lot of the cameras and everything. So um, it's uh, a really good program and one I highly recommend. So we just get that one downloaded in. Uh, launch it, let it run. Okay, and that should be Nina. Uh, on the PC. As I say, sometimes you get these little things come up where you have to give it permission to go through your firewall. I've just noticed there that the ASCOM platform hasn't actually finished installing, so I'll just click on that. The next thing I'm going to look at is Google Remote Desktop. Now here you would get a download for the desktop, but because I'm on my Google account, it's already attached to my Google. Uh, it attaches itself as an extension on your Google. So basically uh, here I won't actually get the option for a download as it's already installed on my uh, a Google account. So you've just got the options to access your screen or share. And basically you can connect into this from any other uh, device that has access to the internet. So my next download is going to be the drivers for the cameras uh, and other equipment. I've got some ZWO cameras. Um, so if we put in here the ZWO driver, you'll find their uh, download center. Uh, it's got their studio, which you can use for imaging and everything. But you'll see below there, you've got drivers and you've got the uh, cameras for Windows and the ASCOM and that seems to cover all of the other things. It covers mainly cameras, it covers the uh, automatic focuser, the focus wheel, and other things. So um, what we'll do is we'll just download those two drivers, and you see there they've even got a copy of the ASCOM platform there. But I think it's better to go to the actual ASCOM website to make sure you get the latest version. So we'll just open those um, driver files and let them download themselves in. It looks like it's jumped to the website there for us to have a look at other things which we don't need. Um, we just want to put the drivers into the PC so that when we plug the USBs in, it's able to detect and control. So I'm looking here, got, got, well, I'm just gonna download everything that's available because you never know what you might need. So we'll just uh, put those in as well. I won't be using the ST4 cable because I guide using guide pulses, um, but uh, we'll just download it anyway as it's not gonna harm anything for it to be there. It's better to have it and not want to use it than to not have it and then you suddenly need it. Okay, so that's the cameras downloaded and what we're going to look at now is the EQ mod for, I'm having a bit of trouble typing here, let's try that. EQ ASCOM will take you to where you can find the EQ mod. Now I use uh, Skywatcher mounts and the EQ mod is really good for Skywatcher mounts. 
There are other things that you can use, which is a green swamp server. This is something I actually want to have a look at. I just haven't had time yet. Um, and I, it is something I will be looking at, so I will get there to compare it with EQMod because it's a little bit more recent. Um, EQMod's been around a long time and uh, Green Swamp Server is a bit newer. So I'm just having a look at this a second to see what we need to download and I think we need to click on EQ ASCOM, which we're on. So now, uh, if I scroll down, you just have to look around sometimes to find exactly what you need. Make sure the ASCOM platform is installed, which it is. I'm just having a look here. Why can't I see what I want here? Ah, downloads up there on the top. So click on that. And it's saying that the latest version is on SourceForge. So sometimes it does move you around. We'll accept that. Uh, is it? Oh, actually, I think it's the EQ mod files there at the top. Uh, the EQ has come. That's the latest version. I, always, I would say always get the latest version. Um, and then it's saying your download will start shortly. You can see if you've got anything downloading, you can just have a quick look, make sure it's not already doing something. We'll take you there in a few moments. Okay, here we go. Is this right? Thank you for downloading EQ mod. Let's have a look. It's not there. Okie dokie. That's nice and confusing. Let's have a look here. It looks like I haven't actually downloaded it. What's this here? So sometimes these sites are not as straightforward. Here we go. There's EQ mod with a download link next to it. There we go. That's what we need. So we click that download link. Hopefully it will uh, appear on the screen. Let's have a look here. Is it downloading? No, it's not. Let's close that down a second. Oh. It's just switched page. Here we go. It's doing that download will short start shortly. Still not downloading. No, oh, here we go. That's down there. Keep. Open. And hopefully that's that downloaded. Yep. We can now open it. That was a nice quick program. Just a bit awkward finding the actual download link. Okay, uh, which we're gonna need a guiding program and PHD2 is uh, the one I use the most. And we've got some download links, oh, some down here. Again, PHD2 is not a massive program, so um, it should load itself in nice and quickly. Don't need to uh, launch it or read it for now. And that's your guiding uh, program put in onto your PC. So next, we're going to have a look for a plate solver. Now, the one I recommend is Astap. I know there's been some changes to Astap since I last downloaded it. Um, I think they've updated the, um, the star database. So let's have a look at this a second. All right, there's quite a bit to read here. I'm just having a look roughly at what's going on. We've got 64. Four bit windows there, we've got program. And then on the right there, we've got databases listed. Uh, okay, so it's same one of the star bases of D50 or D20 or D05. 
C table below, the database is H18 and 17, which is what I used before, will be phased out. Right, so we want to use these. I will use the biggest one, which I do believe is D50. So it's best to have the, the one that's got the most information because it's going to be uh, better at solving for you because it's going to have more details and more data. Right then, so the first thing to do is, I do believe it's click on program, I think, or is that, that's the database, I do believe. Or is, let's try program first and see what that gives us. That's ASTAP. So I think this is the actual plate solver program. Uh, let's um, keep. And then once it's downloaded, we'll open it. It's not open ready yet. Here we go, it's ready now. Okay. Uh, thank you for downloading ASTAP. Does that mean we've got it? And then we've got the D50 Large Star Database Installer. Now that looks the same, ASTAP program. Hmm. Let's have a look there, it doesn't look like what we got there. Looking down the list, it doesn't look like it's there. Let's try this again. This is the D50 star database. Let's just have a look in here. The ASCOM platform has finished downloading, which is good. Oh, actually, I've just spotted ASTAP setup. There it is. So I'll try and get that running. We'll double click that. Okay, so you just need to click on more info when you get this, don't click, don't run, because obviously it's just only because it's not signed to Windows, so it's just making sure you're checking that you know it's from a safe source and it's not a virus. So there we go, there's ASTAP, so we just let that download itself. Now I think that's the program, but we still need to download the database. So I'll close this down and then um, there's the database, the D50 star database, which we want into the ASTAP. Hoping that that is about to download in. The star database file is quite large, so it takes a few moments to download. So what I might do, you know, might, if this carries on for too long, I will forward it, but uh, I want to try and show this in real time so you can see the kind of work involved in putting all of this stuff on your PC. So we'll just let this uh, run on. As I say, I found the ASTAP to be a really reliable plate solver. Uh, it works really well for your regular plate solver and your blind solver. So if you don't even know what you're looking at, you can blind solve the sky and then it will know where it's pointing and then um, get you on track or get you to a target that you're looking for. Really excellent way of uh, centering targets and uh, finding what you want in the night sky. So uh, uh, definitely worth downloading. Okay, we can finish that. That's good. All right, we're all done with that. 
so next we are going to put in Stellarium if I can spell it what we're doing here is this is a planetarium software um, and this is what I like to use to show me what's in the sky at certain times of year or the night I'm actually looking to image it will give me a field of view I can put in my camera and sensor details and scope details and it will give me a box showing what field of view I get that helps with my framing um, a really useful useful tool and I, I like it because uh, it's quite nice to look at it, it, it's really useful to just scan around and look at what's up in the night sky um, oh dear it looks like Aztec I might have pushed the button a few times and it's trying to install itself again uh, I don't yeah I think I'm just reinstalling it again there oh, it won't hurt it I'll leave that running um, so yes let's have a look at Stellarium as I say this is a very good program to help you find just if you want to have a look around even if you just want to have a look at you know what's about um, and you're not imaging it's a, a very useful tool um, and it's a good way of helping you learn the night sky and seeing what's about and also you can see how it's going to move through the night so you can um, work out whether it's going to be a useful um, program for you or not. Okay, I'm just having a look for the rolling roof computer interface. Um, now, I've got a copy of this on my PC, and I do believe that the available links that you'll find if you search online will take you to here, which unfortunately they... Um, the company that were providing links to the ASCOM driver have decided to password protect their in their um, page so you're unable to download through them so what my plans are I've got to do my roof so I will be um, putting together the ASCOM driver and the Arduino sketch code uh, which helps run the roof and I'll be posting that somewhere for you to download. I'm going to have to try and link it to my website or something so that you're able to download it because you can no longer download it from this site here. So I'm just going to skip this bit. I'm going to go to the next bit that we need to download. OK, so that's Stellarium downloaded. So what I'd like to do now um, is quickly call up uh, Nina. Um, because within Nina there are some extra downloads that you may be interested in doing. So um, just going to click on that. And once you're in Nina, you can go down to, you've got their options, you've got lots of different choices to do here. Um, first thing I'll do here actually is I'm going to just link up the ASTAP so if you click on the link for it go to your program files click on ASTAP there it is and then say open that is now a link to your ASTAP and the plate solver in Nina will use that okay um, let's just have a quick look so this is where you would add all of your uh, devices. So when you plug your camera in, it should come up in a list there. The same with anything else that you've got, whether it be a filter wheel, focuser, etc. So you get everything connected uh, through there. And I use the dome controls to open and close my roof. Um, and there's, there's lots of different uh, options. I mean, Nina's quite a comprehensive program. Well worth looking at. And then the plugins are really good. We've got lots of uh, third party people writing great plugins for Nina, which is extending its uh, abilities even further. Uh, one that I would recommend is called uh, Hocus Focus. This really does improve the automatic focus routine. Um, you'll normally find that when you've downloaded um, any of these, you'll see there on the top right it says requires restart. You normally need to restart it. What else do we like on here? Um, I also use the 
uh, light bucket is quite useful. This can allow you to see what other people are imaging and even link up with other people. So you could end up doing uh, collaborations and stuff. Um, but it's good to see what other people are imaging. It could give you ideas of what you might want to do. And the Nina three point polar alignment routine is quite good too. Definitely worth downloading. Um, I use uh, an Ioptron iPolar, but if I should have a problem with that, or you know it's playing up, or for any reason, it's always good to have a good backup. And the Nina um, three point polar alignment is really good for that. So once you've downloaded your plugins, click a restart, and they will be available for you. Let's uh, just let Nina boot up. Here we go. And then normally if you go to, your, I think it's your imaging tab, you can see them there in your uh, plugins, showing you all of them that are installed. And if you go to your imaging tab, you'll see some tabs at the bottom there. And there's your three point polar alignment. Uh, yeah, aberration inspector, that's all part of Hocus Focus. So they're all available, everything's available within Nina to be used. So um, really, really good. And it's great that people are writing extra programs for your computer. But that is basically how to set your PC up for astrophotography. So that's how basically downloading all the software that you're going to kind of need for an astrophotography rig. That's what I put on my mini PC and my next stage will be to connect it to my mount and plug all the USBs in and get everything talking to one another. And once they're doing that, we can then start imaging. So, um, it, you know, a little bit involved in places. Some of the websites are easier to navigate than others, but a little bit of uh, just a little bit of reading through and you can normally find what you need and get it downloaded what's great is most of it if not all of it is free software so that's a great thing um, as I say I use this route over something say like the ASI Air even though a majority of my equipment is a ZWO, I do like the fact I'm not tied to ZWO, which you are if you use an ASI Air. If you use a mini PC, which actually is a little bit cheaper to buy than the ASI Air, um, you, you've got the freedom to have what you want. And you can add the extra software in there, so things like Stellarium, etc. And you've got the ability to remote into it and everything else. So for me, there's a few advantages over that route to the ASI Air, although I'm not putting that down at all because I know that's an absolutely excellent piece of kit. And especially for people starting out in astrophotography, it simplifies things a lot and uh, is a great way to go. Anyway, um, if you have any questions or problems, uh, drop me a line in the uh, comment section always happy to respond to you um, and if I can help you out that's brilliant um, but otherwise until next time I'd like to wish you all clear skies and uh, please take care.